of the times, unfortunately, uh, people uh, misuse the food. There's no need for foods which are uh, not uh, required uh, and they use it and all. So what I recommend as a physician is a balanced diet with uh, a mixture of carbohydrates, proteins and uh, uh, the fats, which is the most important uh, dietary uh, plan. And that again can be variable from person to person depending on his uh, type of diseases which he has. But for a healthy person, we need a balanced carbohydrate diet with a proteins and uh, uh, fats which has to be used in a balanced way in a proper uh, requirement only depending on the calorie requirement we call scientifically a person requires a particular calories like for example an average person requires not more than 1800 to 2000 calories so we calculate the all the three ingredients the carbohydrates proteins and fats based on this something like 50 percent should be around when you talk about uh, uh, an apparently healthy person, I use the word apparently healthy yeah. because probably the process of disease has already started but they are not aware of that in most of the times. So then they feel that they are apparently fine but actually the disease process is already set in. It could be a, the most of the diseases are a combination of genetic and environmental influence, scientifically speaking. So what happens is, you are maybe prone based on your gene profile compared to your uh, parents' uh, genetics. You may be prone for a diabetes. But that need not happen. Provided you take about the environmental and lifestyle factors. Okay. The most problem, problematic thing is the lifestyle modifications. If they are modified to such an extent, they go out of hand, they can trigger early onset of all the diseases. Okay. So that's what happens. So suddenly they find that, oh, my sugar levels are high, mm -hmm. somebody says. And suddenly one day they go to the doctor and the doctor says your blood pressure is very high. Mm -hmm. Only then they realize. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't happen just genetically. The lifestyle factors are the most important things in my opinion. And that's the reason why all the chronic diseases, we doctors always advise that now the focus should be on the preventive aspects. Okay. How to prevent the disease mm -hmm. rather than uh, yeah, modify the disease after it has set in. Okay. Again, uh, it's a very good question because uh, most of the times the nervous system and uh, its influence on the immunological system and other systems triggers a disease process. So by calming the nervous system, there can be a lot of uh, benefits. The important benefit is it's at the neurohormonal level we see. The nervous system is calm, the hormone system is intact because the brain, the nervous system is the hub or the center for all the hormones. That's where the hormones start. So all these hormones have a role to play in various organ metabolism. Most important the cardiovascular, the heart, the uh, respiratory system and the digestive system. These are some of the important things I mentioned but there are links with every system. So these, by calming this nervous system, by uh, techniques in I feel, uh, what we call in allopathic terms as just a word relaxation techniques, which unfortunately is not explored much in allopathy. Relaxation techniques, what we mean is by the uh, behavioral therapies, meditation and uh, breathing exercises, which are not unfortunately highlighted much. Though they just use it as a words. So these can really have a very good impact on the hormone system which I feel can have a great effect on the organs metabolism and their activity. I can uh, see as a pulmonologist uh, dealing with the respiratory diseases of which some of them for example are very commonly known to people asthma and other diseases, allergies. I, have, I feel strongly that there is a strong link with the stress and the way of lifestyle and uh, they are spending more time with the work related stress and the stress is carried home the work stress is carried home it affects the family life and in that way I think they are completely changing the balance of their proper living and that's why they get more triggered and prone for all these stressful diseases and stress can cause effect on all the systems of the body especially the neurohumoral the 
uh, endocrine the humoral immunological uh, systems which indirectly will affect all the organs of the body especially the major organs the heart the lungs and the other things i have a slight uh, uh, exposure uh, in my early days when i was in the medical school of uh, the naturopathy i was just looking at these principles then i have some uh, developed some interest towards the complementary therapies out of my own interest i was always fascinated that where there is a limitation for allopathy can we explore something from the other aspects other systems especially the complementary alternative medicines so out of my interest i was just going through the literature search and all the research has done whatever research done i found that there is a tremendous uh, scope for that because there's a new system has come which is called in 70s it is called the body mind medicine or the mind body medicine i should use the word that's better word mind body medicine in scientific terms we call it a psycho neuroimmunology link or pni link where they found that the mind has such an influence on the body and its activities that these uh, can be intervened the diseases can be intervened non medically by the alternative therapies which can have a great impact complementary to the treatments which are given to the actual treatments in medical allopathic standards we give the treatment they can have a tremendous impact on the complementary uh, therapies the problem is research is dominated by the pharmaceutical companies uh the most important thing is the abdominal breathing which has a role to play because the diaphragm is the most important muscle for the breathing and which if it is healthy and if it is in proper function which takes 75% of your breathing is done by the diaphragm so if you are maintaining a good diaphragmatic breathing which unfortunately many people don't understand and they do the opposite of that when you ask them to breathe the abdomen has to come out because the diaphragm pushes the abdominal organs and the abdominal wall has to come out the contrary is done by people when they ask you to uh, take a breath they are doing it the opposite way like they are putting the abdomen in with force and that pushes the diaphragm up impedes the lung it can have a bad effect so we need to explain especially i do it for my patients with respiratory diseases to train them in my clinic itself about the diaphragmatic breathing which if they can be able to do that most of the uh, burden in their uh, uh, what do you say disease especially the breathing difficulties in asthma and bronchitis can be reduced and second the clavicular breathing is also interestingly in people with severe respiratory diseases they already use the clavicular breathing because out of their own uh, uh, difficulty in uh, having a proper breath they adapt to this involuntarily like they try to take a deep breath where the normal muscles which are supposed to be the standby muscles because the diaphragm is dominating other muscles need not work they don't have much role to play these are called the accessory muscles of respiration so they dominate because the diaphragm is not doing its function these muscles take over so this way they already adapt so sometimes by training these muscles also the clavicular breathing and all that it helps them to expand the upper portions of the lung whereas the diaphragmatic breathing or the abdominal breathing makes them to expand the middle and lower portions predominantly the thoracic breathing predominantly improves the central part of the lungs so this really uh, i was just looking at the yogic uh, breathing techniques and all there is a meaning for each and every type of breathing because each part of the lung is expanded by one particular type of muscle breathing the relaxation methods which are so important for stress relieving one of the main uh, thing i feel is the breath because it is obvious that by controlling your and regulating your breath you can control your uh, nervous system better control your emotions better so for a common man to control his emotions and control his uh, behavioral activity this breathing techniques if you train for 10 minutes or 8 minutes of 8 to 10 minutes of pranayama or the breathing techniques if you can do it on a regular basis i think that will have a great impact on his overall health 
not only the lungs, for the whole system.